Okay, so good afternoon and evening, everyone. Today we're gonna to be talking about running multi-division events. Um, we're going to be talking about multi-division events. Uh, today, I'm actually going to show you two different ways uh, to run the multi-division events using Tournament Manager. Uh, depending on your situation, uh, might change how you um, actually set up, not only set up your event, but as well as run the event. So the first way I'm going to show you is the uh, preferred method. Um, it's a little bit simpler of a setup. Uh, it just requires a thumbstick or some sort of way of transferring uh, the database file. So the first way um, I am going to demonstrate how to uh, run a multi-division event is actually by creating individual tournaments um, and importing them into each other. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to go to robotevents.com and we are going to go to our the view side of it and we are going to download the tournament manager import data. And so what this is gonna allow us to do is to pull all the, our entire team list. So in this case, when I do that, I get a team list. Um, and do not worry, this event has already been finalized, so you cannot mess with it. So what happens is you get your CSV file that looks something like this. Um, so um, once you get your CSV file, um, however you wish to divide your event, whether for this year you're going to divide your event locally, whether AM, PM, or whether you're just going to do one, two, one, two, one, two, um, this is where you're going to start to um, separate the teams out. Now, what we recommend is actually uh, opening up two new Excel documents. Uh, not modifying this one, like you just saw me do, but not modifying this one. And what you're going to do instead is you're going to copy and paste out the team numbers. So now what we do here is click the very top left corner of, I mean, let's actually walk this through little by little. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create my new file, just a blank document, click the top left corner, copy it, paste it over in the new document. You'll see that everything got pulled. Um, I'm actually gonna create another new document as well for however many divisions you're gonna run. So today we're gonna to set up two divisions. So I'm gonna set up two new documents. I'm gonna get rid of our original document, just so I don't um, affect that document. And now what we're gonna do, in this case, I'm just gonna do a simple um, one, two method. So I'm gonna skip every other team. So on this side, I'm gonna delete all of the odd number teams. Now I'm sure there's a much more efficient way of doing this, um, but all I'm doing is control clicking the, uh, the rows to highlight them and we are going to delete these teams. 49, 51. Uh, from here, the easiest way to get rid of them is right click, click delete. It will get rid of all the spaces for you. Um, please keep in mind that if you go through um, this side and you, and you just click delete, you would actually have to get rid of this, this row anyway. So definitely the easiest way of doing this is to highlight the row and is to go through here and just delete your teams. So I already did this earlier today, so I don't have to go too much further, but just so everyone sees what's going on, delete, delete. So all this work that we're doing right now is just prep work that you would do uh, beforehand. And this is for assigning your divisions. 
So uh, again, I just went every other. This time I went with all, oh, I messed up though. Got to do that again. Don't do that. I accidentally drag clicked. So one moment, I apologize. Right click, delete. Again, make sure that there are, there are no spaces in between the the files. Um, and um, the the next the, the next step that we're going to do is super important. So, um, Tournament Manager only reads CSV files. So when you go to um, save these documents. I'm going to name it something that is going to make a lot of sense, but then I'm going to change the save type to a CSV, not a CSV UTF-8, a CSV, just a standard CSV. And we are going to click save. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Again, save it as something that is Super important, and that's from um, that's memorable. Uh, doing it by whatever you're going to call the divisions um, would be uh, very helpful. Change this again to a CSV. Again, super important that it must be a CSV. And now I have both divisions assigned. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of these Excel documents. Um, and now we're gonna set up one of the divisions on the computer that we're working with right here. So what you would do is we're gonna create a new tournament. We're gonna call it left side nights. Um, if, I, if it starts typing. It's unfortunate, one moment, sorry about that. I'm just going to reboot TM real quick. So create a new tournament. Side night event. And now it's going to bring us to the, the normal wizard that I'm sure all of us have seen a thousand times. And again, if you just entered, uh, this call is being recorded. Um, and it is currently recording. Um, so if you ever have to uh, dip out at some time or if you would like to leave because it is being recorded, now is your opportunity. Um, so in this case, we're going to click event is listed on robot events. Um, I already have a my TM code. It's already off to the side. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in. 
again, this is a this is a code that has already been finalized. Um, so please don't try and use it. But even if you do, it won't be, you won't be able to upload results anyway. Um, this is just going to help me out. Um, it already pre-selected VRC because it's a VRC multi-division event. Um, in this case, um, since we're doing one division um, and we're going to ha only have one uh, field set, we're actually going to select small tournament. Uh, it's the one that is probably used most often. Um, uh, you can also do medium tournament. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I guess in this case, we'll do medium tournament. Uh, Knights qualifier left TM. Um, always pick a really fun password, a password that you know. Uh, one of my favorite passwords to use uh, is after one of my favorite RSMs, uh, who's Ben Mitchell. Um, so Ben rocks. Um, click next. Uh, this is not a league, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is a um, an event from last year, which is why it automatically selected Tower Takeover. But just make sure it does select change up for your event. Um, so from here, since we already created our division list, we're actually going to clear, we're going to click the clear button here. We're going to get rid of the team list that it automatically imported. And we're actually going to import our own team list. So in this case, I already have left side Knights event right here for the left side division. Click open. You'll see it pulled it in correctly. Everything is here. Click next. So a lot of this should be very familiar. However many um, alliance partner uh, alliances you want, go ahead and put that in there for, for, for my sake for right now for this training. I'm just going to do eight, so it's less to click. Um, there's going to be only one field set. And in this case, there's going to be multiple fields. So we're going to do uh, REC, Foundation, and I'm going to name them something fun, like Carol and Cam, because you two are in the call right now. So from here, just go through your normal check-in guide. Um, I already, and again, this is just for my sake, I'm going to only make it so that I only have to do, uh, do eight matches in order to complete this uh, tournament. So this is where you would set up the normal schedule as if it was running normal. Um, go ahead, click next. Um, you don't have to create your qualification matches now. I did just for today. So now when we get to the award setup, this is one of those very critical steps. Um, and you want to make sure that you only have uh, selected the awards that you're going to be giving out at the division level. So for example, like excellence, if you're going to be giving out a, a, an excellence award between both divisions, then you can keep it selected and it's perfectly fine, as well as things like build, amaze, create, judges and sportsmanship. So just make sure that, uh, that at, at this stage, you only select the awards that are being, being given out at the divisional level. Um, if you're only giving out one excellence award, we'll handle that in a little bit, but go ahead, click next. Um, as a, as, a, as a friendly reminder, uh, make sure not to turn on web publishing until you're ready. Um, that way, if teams um, don't show up or uh, they pull themselves due to not being able to pass inspection or, or what have you, you don't have to uh, get teams mad at you because they've already talked to their alliance partners after you regenerate the match schedule. So again, just a friendly reminder, don't uh, do web publishing until you are uh, ready. So we're just going to click next, and our, now our setup is complete. This is going to be the same screen that, I'm, again, I'm sure you've all seen a thousand times. And now from here, your tournament is going to run 100% as normal. So we're just going to go through here. We're going to score our matches. In, in this event, it looks like only people are winning autonomous. They're not even scoring any points. Um, so don't ask me how. The computer's going to have some fun working through the tiebreakers. I'm just going to quickly go through this tournament. Man, this don't we wish all of our tournaments went this quickly? In and out in 45 seconds. And you tied. So now alliance selection, start alliance selection. I'm uh, 
I'm just going through the tournament really quickly, so don't mind me. We're going to finalize our alliances. Yes, I'm sure. Scoring. Elim. So we're, we're assuming that this is going on normally throughout the day. You're getting your, your runs in. You're starting and stopping the match with our uh, box down here. But for right now, for the speed of everything, we are flying through this. And we are done. No, we're not. We saw finals. Okay. So now after this point, we've run through the entire day. It's a nice six, seven, eight, ten hour day, whatever, however long it winds up being. I hope it doesn't wind up being ten hours. Um, we now have our divisional champion for the left side. And what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to run the right side. Oh, the, th the thing to keep in mind uh, is when it asks to upload results, do not upload results because you're not done yet. So I'm just going to launch Tournament Manager um, that represents the other division that is current that was running concurrently or not running concurrently. A like if you're running an AM and PM division, they don't they do not have to run at the same time, which is why this is the preferred method. I forgot to, I selected the wrong event. So we're gonna do the same thing again, and I'm just gonna walk everyone through it one more time. So in order to Um, in order to create our event, here we go. So this is our division for the event. I apologize. We're going to walk through the same wizard that we've walked through a thousand times. I'm going to import uh, the event code data just because it automatically has our awards in there. You do not have to do this section if you do not. I mean, you, you need to do this section for uploading. So I am going to copy and paste in our event code data. It automatically selected VRC. I'm going to do this one again under medium tournament, but you can also do it under small tournament. There's nothing wrong with it. Nice qualifier right side. Again, I would, I would always name this, um, your division names. Um, and again, a fun unique password that you'll remember. tower takeover for me so again walking through this we're going to clear out the team list that's there because it automatically pulled the team list from robot events then we're going to import the csv file that we created earlier so we are now doing the right side tournament so we're going to create we're going to import the right side night event and now we can see here that there's a different set of events so we're going to do the same thing that i did last time we're going to quickly run through the event And then just so I can have a little bit of fun. Um, I hope you are giving teams more than one run on faster than six minute match cycles. Because multi-division events are super useful for getting teams more runs. Uh, we created our match schedule. Again, for web publishing, don't activate web publishing until after you are ready. And again, we are just going to pretend like we are going throughout the day and scores are coming in. The Red Alliance today is winning due to autonomous consistently. The Blue Alliance just keeps crossing that line. Who knows why? We're 
go through a line selection. This is going to be the fastest line selection ever. Man, that line selection was so fast. So many oohs and ahs. Going through our matches. Again, the red alliance just keeps winning. There must be a curse on the blue alliance. Oops, forgot to choose a winner for that one. Okay, so now both our divisions are robot-wise completely done. All their matches are done, they're scored. So now we're going to merge them together. So we're gonna merge the, actually the two database files um, together. Um, so a best practice to have is to find your database files. So in this case, my database files are here and here. They're under the My Documents folder for me. And I'm actually just going to uh, copy these. And I'm going to save them somewhere just in case I mess something up that, um, that I have a, a copy to go back on. So. We have a backup just in case we mess something up. So again, it's always best practice to make sure that you copy or duplicate these files um, and make sure you have a spare or a backup just in case something happens. But in this case, we're not gonna mess up. So now what you do is under one of the two divisions, doesn't matter what division you select, uh, you get to choose which one it is. Uh, since the right division is the division that I just completed, this is going to become the master file now. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge the other division that just happened or the other event that we just completed into this event. So we're going to go to file and we're going to import a division. So when we go to import this division, we're going to create a new division. Um, and we're going to select the database file from the other event. So, or the other division that was running concurrently or in the morning or however you want to phrase it. So when you do that, it will think for a few moments. And now we can see that the tournament file was successfully imported. Now, when you go up to matches, you'll see that there's a new option called create playoff tournament. So when you click, uh, create playoff tournament, you'll get this new screen. And it's actually gonna ask you to, to add a third division. So what are we gonna call it? We're gonna call it uh, finals because it's gonna be the finals for the event. And randomly assign one to one, the other to the other. Click create playoff bracket. So what you'll see is the, the playoff tournament has been created successfully. Go ahead and exit out of this, and you're actually going to uh, close TM and reopen it. So I'm going to open it right back up. And what you'll see is we're going to, because all we're doing is switching the divisions. So now this is acting as if there are multiple divisions. So we can see division one, which is the right side division, which you can change the name of that. Uh, Knights qualifier left, which is the division we imported, and then the finals division, which is the division that we just created by doing the playoff matches. And so what you'll do is you'll get another window that's open and you'll get this screen. So from here, you will see under, it's already created the finals matches and it pulled the teams from both divisions ready to go so you can choose your winner here red alliance again wins action now they broke the curse during finals click save and now when you go to awards 
if you go to the very bottom left hand corner you'll see exclude other divisions from the list so if you unclick that you'll actually see every award that was given out um if you if you want to add so if you if you were only giving out one excellence award this is this would be the time to do it so you go to tools options and then you would select awards and anything that would be event wide so in, instead of excellence being um per division we're going to change it so it's only um event wide so we're only giving out one excellence award and you can do that for for everything instead of judges and inspire being both sides we can get rid of that um our mentor of the year teacher of the year same thing with all of these um, and so you can make the changes to the awards and how they are here um, and you'll see that um, they have their different things you can still assign the the awards correctly it pulled everything through so if you're giving an award to division one it will only pull up the the teams for that division it, it doesn't give you the entire list if you autofill your winners it will pull it and 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 put it on there for you um Right now, my team's apparently having a little bit of an issue. Um, but um, then you, as soon as all your awards are are submitted under the awards tab, just go ahead and click upload results to, to robot events. And what you'll see on robot events is something that is similar to, to this, where the skills list will we'll, we'll show up as one combined skills list. But then um, your divisions will actually be a tab which the teams can click through, including the finals tabs of who won the finals matches. So each division has their own tab, skills has their own tab, and that final division of whoever your division champion is there, as well as if you click on awards, you can see who won every single award. So this is the awards for the math division. Here are the awards for the science division and, and so on. Um, so that is one way of doing divisions. Um, it is the preferred way, especially if you do not have an internet connection that will connect you between uh, the main server and the other computers. Um, so if you're running in a space uh, that is completely separated or separated by by time and you you only you don't need to have the ability to to run two two divisions at, at the exam, same exact time from from the same server um, so I'm going to pause for a moment um, and see if uh, anyone has any questions um, and then I will quickly show the other other method um, and again, there are there are two ways of doing this. Um, so, um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask, or you can type in chat. Um, I'll give you a few moments to type in chat and and see. What's the main purpose for running a tournament this way in two divisions versus just one division? Is there a reason for it? Um, so there, especially for this year, uh, for, due to COVID restraints, if you could only have um, a certain number of teams in at a time, so you're like doing an AM division or like running an event in the AM and then running an event in the PM and then getting them uh, back together in like the evening to declare a champion is one way. Um, another reason for doing it is if you're running multiple field sets, um, so, for example, if you're running two field sets with, uh, with two fields on each field set, um, you're basically already running a multi-division event um, because you're already running two fields concurrently. Um, and so you already need two sets of head refs, you need two sets of uh, computers. Uh, and so it helps with the logistics of the event um, and separating um, the, the tournament manager files. And it's a, it's a way of getting more matches in um is is what it really comes down to
Does that answer your question, Matt? Okay, it does. Yeah, thank you. So Matt, I assume you're you're a current event partner. So uh, how many teams do you do you typically see at your events or the events you run? If you don't mind answering. Right now, right now we have four, three or four uh, remote skills events set up, but we're working on doing a couple more in-person ones right now. We just with all the restrictions, it's kind of hard to, to gauge everything. So pre-COVID, what is the largest event you ran? Uh, this is, I've helped work events in the past. This is my first year being uh, EP actually. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, yeah. So a lot of times you'll see, um, oh, I don't want to say a lot of times. Sometimes you will see event partners that typically have more than like 70 teams um, break up into multiple divisions because then at that point you get like 235 or 236 team events that are running. Um, and sometimes um, thinking about an event uh, thinking about running two like 35 team events uh, seems a little bit more manageable than running one 70 team event. And so especially in areas like um, schools that have multiple gyms or schools that are going to be running um, um, who have the space to run it, uh, but it's split between two areas is also another reason. So they have like two gyms, for example. Okay, so unless they do the same thing, like oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Please uh, ask. Can you do the same thing if you run like a mixed event? You know, uh, middle school, high school, or elementary, middle school. Yep. You could you could run a middle school division and you could run a high school division, uh, but if you're already doing that, then honestly, you should be running two separate events just so that they get their. Um, the qualifications correct, uh, depending on your state, it could affect how they qualify to either the middle school state championship or the high school state championship. Um, so if you're already splitting between like middle school and high school, um, the event should be separated on robot events to begin with. Um, it really helps for, again, for like, if you're running an IQ event, if you want to run like two events in the same day and, and, and an AM and PM session or um, yeah. And, and, and what, and, and what Ben just said is a significant point. Uh, if you run a middle school division and a high school division, um, they'll wind up playing each other in the end. So you'll have a middle school versus high school. So if that's, if that's what you want, then that's perfectly fine. Um, but they they would wind up playing each other in the very end anyway. Okay, um, and so I'm just going to quickly show you the other way of um, running a multi division event. And so this this way of doing it is really good if uh, you're going to have a sh very strong connection between the two divisions. Um, uh, there is no right answer. The The first method that I showed is the preferred method of doing it. Uh, this is just another way. So if this is the way, if this is the way that you choose, there's nothing wrong with it. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a new, new tournament again, and we're going to call it multi division nights. Um, and we're going to start to go through our wizard just like we did last time. So here's our wizard. Our event is posted on robot events. Where is it? Here's my numbers. There's my event code. Oh, I did not copy and paste correctly. By the way, if you're ever looking at your event code and you don't know if you copied and pasted the right one, um, RE means robot events. Uh, the next distinction here will be what platform it is, VRC, BIQC. Uh, this next section will be the uh, year, and then uh, the last four is the, the number. That's one of the reasons it's a unique um, 
that's one of the ways that it gets its unique number. So you can see it already selected VRC. So this time, instead of picking small or medium, we're actually gonna go down to large. Um, so larger expert. So larger experts where you're gonna get to run multi-division all from like one main, um, uh, where you're gonna get to set up the multi-division event from one main server. Um, the event name is gonna stay the same. Uh, this time it's gonna be Mike Martis as my password. Again, it should show up as change up, but the, in this case, it's tower takeover because that's the one that I converted. Um, so match duration, you, you don't play with this at all. You move on. Um, but this is where we're actually gonna set up our multi-division events. So if you're having two, three, four, up to 12 different events, uh, 12 different divisions, uh, this is where you would select. So in this case, we're setting up a dual division of its event, and this is where we're going to, to name it. Splinter and Shredder. Um, this is going to be important to know when you start to uh, get computers and everything to connect. So if you're running tablets or if you're running um, uh, multiple computers, especially for things like um, pit displays and everything, um, they, you need to remember which division is which. So again, make sure you label the divisions in a way that makes sense. Um, so you can see in this case, it automatically pulled everything in. Um, so you can assign random divisions. And as you can see, every time I click this, the, the team list changes. Um, I personally would recommend just doing the assigned uh, order divisions and it just goes one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So splinter, shredder, splinter, shredder, splinter, shredder. Um, and there could be no confusion of who is in what division. It's 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 automatically assigned by robot events just based on their team number in numerical order. Um, no one can ever question anything. Um, if you uh, would like, you can import your own CSV, but you really shouldn't. Um, so you should you really only be using the assign random divisions button or the assign order divisions button. Um, so I'm going to assign um, assign order divisions button. Uh, when you're going through the wizard here, uh, the thing to keep in mind is um, how many um, alliances are going to be in each division. So um, it's not um, each division, it's not how many alliances are there all together, it's in each division. Um, so we're going to click eight. For field sets, you have to have at least one field set per division. You can't run a multi-division event this way on only one field set. So since we have two divisions, you have to have a minimum of two field sets. So please keep that in mind. There, there is a tool tip right here that says an event with multiple div division needs at least one field set for each division. So please keep that in mind. If you're running a two division event, you need to have two field sets at least. When you start to name your, your field sets, I would, um, suggest naming them, um, naming the field sets to which division they're gonna be assigned to. Um, you don't have to, this is just for um, later. I am just throwing in random things. I don't even know if things are spelled right. And again, so when you go to set up your, your pit displays, um, you're gonna notice that we can call it um, different things. Um, pit display one. Um, and now you actually have to select which division it is. So again, um, make sure that you select the correct division for your, for your pit displays. Oh. Um, and when you go to do your match schedule, you'll notice that it's actually going to generate the same match schedule for both sides. So assuming both sides are equal, um, it will generate a match schedule for both sides. So you can see here that uh, on for in a 45 minute segment, on a six minute, six minute match cycle, 
Shredder and Splinter will both get eight matches. And you can see it here again after you add it, as well as again here after you add it. Each side gets one, uh, each team will get one match. There are eight matches in total for both sides. Um, so that's how you read this. Um, so it will generate this, uh, the schedule set up for both sides. So this is one of the this is one of the reasons why, uh, depending on the type of event that you're running, um, why doing it the, the way that we just did it might be um, better. But if both running simultaneously at the same exact time, um, then you can absolutely do it this way. Um, when you go to create your qualification schedules, um, you'll get a notification that I created one for both. Um, so you can see here the shredder division is actually slightly smaller. So this, uh, the shredder division uh, is actually only running seven matches. And again, this is where you're going to go through and click which, which awards are being assigned to what. So if you're giving a excellence award for each, uh, each division, leave it as is. If you only are giving out one excellence award, go ahead and click event wide and, and deselect it from um, the division. So you're just going to go through here, check your boxes as needed. Um, click next. Again, a reminder, don't. Um, Activate web publishing until you are fully ready to go. Teams are checked in, the whole nine yards. You'll notice now that when we open up Tournament Manager, you're going to be left with this option. So now you need to correct, uh, select a division. Go ahead, click Continue. Select your division, click Continue. So now for your other um, computers that are going to be connecting. Um, you would just have to select the opposite division. So when you go to do this, you're actually going to um, connect to a, uh, a remote server and you're going to input the IP address, which in this case is here, um, to um, connect to the main server. And then you're going to go through the same exact steps that you went through last time. Match after both the both divisions are done, you're going to create a playoff tournament, which it's going to create a third division for you, in which you're either going to need another computer to connect to, or sh shut down one of these, uh, com well, shut down one of these tournament manager files, uh, open it back up, select the division, and complete as as done. Um, but that is the second way on how to set up a, a multi-division event. Again, if you go under awards, you'll see it looks the exact same. Um, you'll see that there's event-wide trophy, uh, event-wide awards as well as uh, Splinter Shredder awards. Um, so, does anyone have any questions? Uh, if we are planning to host a live remote tournament for elementary IQ, could we use the division model to allow teams to be split by day? This would help teams by giving transition time to share equipment if needed. Hypothetically, divisions could run uh, Monday, Wednesday with finals on Friday. It sounds like the preferred method might be best for this example. Um, So Julie, the, the other method that you could do if you didn't want to do uh, the multi-division event uh, would be league. So you could you could do a league. Um, so you could choose between either a league or a multi-division event. Um, I, the your regional support manager uh, would be the best person to answer that and to, and to walk you through it because it all it depends on how many teams are going to be at that event and the whole nine yards. Um, but either a league tournament or a multi-division event should yes be very helpful for you. Uh, but Julie, I would absolutely um, suggest reaching out to your regional support manager and they can walk you through that. Because it does, like, uh, like uh, Ben just said, it, it works slightly different for, for IQ. For divisions so i would definitely um talk to your regional support manager 
Yeah, if I can just jump in, uh, Vex IQ, it takes the top teams from uh, everybody, regardless of what division they're in. So you're not going to know who's going to be in finals until the end of the second day. Uh, so it works a little bit differently. Not necessarily that it won't work at all. There you go. So a league might be better in your case for your for for what you just described. But does anyone have any other questions? Uh, again, either method of setting up your multi-division event works. I I do recommend or suggest the first method that I showed of creating two, uh, you know, creating individual events and then importing one into um, the other uh, the other the other event file and uploading results that way it does make the technology constraints a little bit easier but i will stay on here for a few minutes if anyone has any questions otherwise um ben thank you for coming and helping with the chat and, and chiming in um and thank you everyone for showing up Thanks, I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir.